Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with the special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Simon. Hello Brian, this artist gets too much hate and I can't understand why. I love his work. Please show some love to Andres, chemistry set. Not the remix version, please, thanks, and have fun. Greetings, Simon. So, let's dive into this. We have chemistry set, not the remixed version. Not sure what the difference is, but this is the original music video for the song. Let's dive into it and see what Andres is bringing to the table today. Mm. Some very light mathy ideas. Almost in a... Okay. Oh, the slight tension, the pop rock sounds. Oh, the heavy harmony. This reminds me of a lot of pop rock, but particularly the uh, Fever You Can't Sweat Out era of Panic at the Disco, which is one of my favorite albums. See this? Ooh! So we keep moving between this light, theatric version with more of the punkier side of pop punk. And if we manage to get our set, is our future something worth trying? Any sacrifice is sanity, the paper is security, and every night she falls asleep smiling. Are we living in a good time right that knows not? I love the energetic drumming in this section. It's very all over the place, so every time something starts to get some energy, it changes into something else. Oh, okay, let's see where this goes. That is a very sharp change. Very interesting. Lots of neat production things. We got the vocal delivery shifts. I love the background vocals. <laughs> oh, that shift back to the uh, singing is nice. Kind of shifted to R and B. This dude's all over the place. You know, I think this is the whole band right here, though. Oh, 
Oh no, there's a base too. Yeah, I mean, it definitely has <laughs> enough of the, uh, uh, what is that? Self-deprecating humor in it to fit inside of the pop punk and even a little bit of post-hardcore areas of lyrical writing. I mean, the final line sums it up. Could I be good enough for you? Because honestly, I'm not that good. Uh, yeah, that is, that's such an emo line right there. It works so well. Um, yeah, this is all over the place, though, and I think that's where I, I want to start, I think, I, like, there's a lot of things I want to talk about here, and which makes it a little difficult for, for me to, <laughs> I'm still organizing my thoughts, because I jammed along with this a bit more than I usually do with, uh, suggestions, so, yeah, a lot of things, let's start with that. It kicks off with some very light, poppy style of vocals with uh, some light guitar work, very light drumming, very theatric. This reminded me of Panic at the Disco, way, way early Panic at the Disco. Not, well, honestly, not anything else. I really only liked one album from them, and that's because they changed their sound drastically frequently. Um... But yeah, it definitely takes me back to an early 2000s style of pop punk, pop rock, everything in that area. But we shift from that into a more in-your-face, punkier style of pop punk that you might hear from someone like Blink-182 or some 41. That's our chorus. And we move back and forth between these two, which is very jarring, to be honest. Now, to be completely fair, I think that the jarring element is intentional. As I mentioned, I picked up more lyrics than I usually... I think I mentioned that. I don't remember now. I picked up more lyrics than usual. I don't know if it's just because I'm very at home in this style or what. I felt I had more mental bandwidth to check that out, though. And, uh, you know, the song is constantly referring to having a chemical or uh, chemistry set uh, put up the way that you want and hoping that your chemistry sets and somebody else's chemistry set can synergize in ways and we frequently saw the main character taking pills and their love interest consuming a, uh, a scientific vial of smoking liquids which I assumed was drugs and alcohol in a way to modify our brain chemistry so that we can better be around those around us whether that's that we're trying to calm ourselves because we hate everybody or that this this couple here has been together for so long that they need these chemical changes in their body to endure the other person's personality um and we frequently had the a scientist sitting in and seeming like they were talking to them which i kind of took as uh, a metaphor for a uh, therapist so that's sort of what I got from the lyrics and the visuals. Um, and so having this jarring back and forth in the music, though, I think works well with that. It's about the two states that someone can be in. Uh, this this high elation and then this chill, withdrawn feeling. It might even lead into some uh, metaphors for uh, bipolar disorder, manic and uh, depressive even though I don't think that the verses are depressive, but the choruses are definitely a bit more manic in comparison. So maybe that's not necessarily the way to read into that, but it is uh, something that I think could be looked into. Uh, how do we get here, though? Oh, yeah, yeah, talking about the song. Moving on from this, we had verse, chorus, verse, chorus. We had this juxtaposition back and forth, and then there was a hard bit of silence, and I honestly thought, oh... You know, we're going to have like two beats of silence, four beats of silence, and come in heavy. This is a pop-punk staple. And then we did it. We stuck with that silence. The drums came in very light. And this picked up the bridge, which went in a very different direction. What was originally very much rooted in the world of pop-rock and pop-punk and sort of finding where those two overlap 
We shifted off into rap and R&B. Not two styles I see associated with the popular side of electric guitar music. Uh, I found this to be very neat, although quite outside of everything else. However, I think that the skills put on display, which, as those two genres tend to do, hyperfixate on the vocalist and their skills, their chops, uh, it was well done here. It started off with a little bit of a pitched spoken word style, which honestly is not something we don't see in pop punk. It's not something we see often, but I've, I can count a few bands who have done something similar, but we quickly shift from that into very straightforward rap. Increasing the speed, uh, the syllabic intensity and, and complexity as far as needing to enunciate things that would be tongue twisters and stuff like that. Uh, and I found this to be a really natural shift from singing to spoken word to rap. I thought that was a very cool progression to attempt to naturally take us into this area. Uh, the rapping seemed to be pretty good. It sounded uh, clean. It was crisp. Uh, there was some speed and complexity to it, and a lot of the syllabic elements sounded really good to my ears. This is one of the few parts that I didn't pick up any lyrics for, which is pretty normal. I have a tough time picking up rap lyrics. But we juxtapose this, once again, swinging to a different style. Moving over to R&B style lyrics, not uh, uh, vocal delivery, but without really changing too much of the instrumental elements. Eventually, fluidly moving back and forth between the rap and the R&B uh, more quickly than we had at the beginning, while retaining that core musical element underneath it. And then this leads us right back into the chorus. High intensity, pop punk style stuff. Um... Again, very jarring juxtaposition there. I had a fun time with this, but I don't think it is without its faults. In individual moments, I was right there for it, and the shifting styles put on display, both from the lyrics, the vocalist, and the instrumentals, was really neat. But at the in the uh, at the end of the day, it is something that feels just a tad bit too disjointed for me, even if I think I can find a thematic purpose for it all. In fact, I even think I have a thematic purpose for the bridge, which seemed to me to be a bit more introspective. It shifted away from speaking about things very directly and bluntly about things everyone can see about these two people, presumably, and shifted it to a self-conscious, inflective look. I thought that was kind of neat shifting the entire sound of the song to reflect a shift in what the uh, vocal narration is going for. But it does end up feeling very all over the place in a way that was tough for me to follow along with on a first time. What it does do, though, is create intrigue, at least for me. I listen to this and I immediately think, wow, I need to check more out of this dude, of uh, this band. I don't necessarily know that everything fit together here, but it showcased such a wide display of skills that I think I'd be doing myself a disservice to not dig more into, to see what else Andres is capable of. What other types of music is created here? And hopefully some songs that focus in just a little bit harder and let me see the bands explore a specific sound a bit more and a bit more cohesively or also, on the other side of the spectrum, I suppose, seeing what else they can do, what other genres they have up their sleeve. Uh, the production is also a part that I want to talk about real quick, and it's just that it's solid. It really is. Uh, it has just enough grit to it to not feel plastically, plasticky and uh, like pristine, to have that clinical element to it, but everything is very clear and crisp clean it, it just has a very bright feeling to the production of it all uh, which allows at least i think the higher pitch intensity especially coming from the guitar and the vocals in the chorus to cut through very well um and so everything comes together very well i just don't know if i'm along for the entirety of the ride but like i said it does create some intrigue in me and wants and it makes me want to check out more from them. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about here? The only other thing I could think of is I don't have a lot of 
details about it, but I did enjoy some of the harmonic elements in the verses. They feel like they sit outside of the rock and punk areas, a little bit more in a theatric range, but it's not necessarily something that I would say is theatric composition or something that you would find in musical theater. But it definitely tries to find the midpoint between rock and musical theater writing, and I think it does a good job of, if nothing else, then emulating the vibe of musical music, <laughs> of theater music, and at least uh, hinting at that, that atmosphere. So it immediately popped into my mind, even though I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, I could see this in a musical, that kind of thing. So I thought that was kind of nice just to introduce a little bit of harmonic uh, shift there. And I guess even technically the R&B section had some harmonic shift as well in order to achieve uh, a completely different emotion for the bridge. So yeah, actually, that's a big strong point for them, is that the composition isn't just pop punk the whole time, and I really appreciate that. Let me hear some lyrics on this and see what's going on. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. There's a lot of lyrics here. More so than I think I was expecting for some reason. And, and it drastically shifts as well. In fact, our final chorus, while it is a return to the chorus musically, is not a return to the chorus lyrically, or even, I think, melodically, now that I'm remembering it. It's a brand new section, which is technically a part of the end of the bridge. It's listed as a refrain here, but I kind of view it as the end of the bridge. Man, it's it's a lot deeper than I would have expected based on what I picked up, which, uh, well, as I mentioned, I missed the entire part where the twist happens. Uh, so the opening verse and chorus and pretty much everything that happens before the bridge is what I expected. And it's what I assumed based off of the music video. The, the visuals, the audio, and the lyrics are all in sync to tell the same thing. It kicks off, and it really couldn't be it more in your face. Is it the coffee or maybe the pills in the morning? Yeah, we like to get our chemistry straight, our chemistry set a little bit too much. Whether it's wine in the evening or bowls before eating, we might like our chemistry set a little too much. The idea that regardless of what the addiction is, whether it is alcohol or drugs or whatever, things that alter our chemistry, our brain chemistry, we're addicted to them, whatever they are. We like them all a little bit too much. And I really like how the first thing is, is it the coffee? I think a lot of people don't, uh, don't talk about this too much. Because, at least in America, coffee culture is very big. But a lot of people drink coffee for the caffeine, which is a drug. It's a controlled substance. And in fact, once you've had enough of it, you begin to develop a resistance for it. You need more. And if you ever decide to wean off of it, you will get withdrawal effects, like coffee, uh, caffeine headaches. Um, it is not quite as severe as hard drugs, but it is something that you can get addicted to and has withdrawal to it. And I, I just feel like we don't talk about that enough, and I love how it's presented here. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, verse 2 is very much about the same thing. It says, I think everybody at this brunch table is sad. A little champagne with some OJ just to forget the past. Once again, about changing how you feel through the use of substances. And the chorus speaks about this not just in general, but in a very specific situation. It says, I know why you keep leaving. You're trying to fix your chemistry. I was nervous all evening. Can we fix our chemistry? This might be the making of just a memory. That feeling is fading. It's just a memory. The idea that even this specific case of a you and I is also vague. There's a lot of you's, even if it's only one I. It's the situation that he has a tough time connecting with many people. I really like that. There isn't a specific you here. At least that's not what it feels like to me. He understands. You keep leaving because you need to adjust your chemistry. You need to change the way you're feeling at the moment. Um, but he also understands this might just be a memory. In fact, it feels like I've done this before. That kind of that kind of idea is what's sort of represented here. I like that. Uh, the interlude just goes into more of this. It's an interesting uh, one-off 
events as a you know it's spoken word there's a guitar in the corner of your living room i pick it up and start playing and i wonder uh who entertained you before me oh uh, just it feels sort of i don't know it's just a nice little anecdote i suppose um verse three goes into more of this we have a chorus again, and verse 4 is the bridge, and this is where the rapping starts, and it moves away from the idea of everybody just adjusting their chemistry and goes into the, uh, the imperfections of the self, specifically speaking about him. It's no longer a song about having a tough time connecting with people, but specifically puts his insecurities on full display says i'm turning 29 this year pushing pushing 30 for real my 10-year high school reunions in november i fear that i might show up wet and reckless i'll be coming off tour with gold necklace i said it in self-aware which i found out was another single from him it says uh, i'm more out of control than ever finally got that decade under the influence come this november uh, i sit and sip wine on this bakerfield night searching for a feeling that we have that we had at one time he's just talking about all this he talks about the time that he met somebody that he had a feeling for but they were uh, you know, out on the town with someone else, and uh, he lied just to see, just to seem cool in front of him. He says uh, that he doesn't really even understand what people want these days. He says people relate to my music, and I don't understand them. He says I'm in a world where I'm one tweet away from losing my job, and uh, I've come to understand that I'll just never be enough for them. So what started out with having difficulty connecting with individual people ends up being a song about not really feeling like you're good enough for anyone because of the way that everyone treats him verse four pulls all of that or verse five pulls all that back out to the singular and it is a father talking to him and says love will never be like in the movies are you going to waste my daughter's time you're going to give up when she gets tough to handle all this stuff and he says, uh, I don't I don't know, man. He says, I'm a poor excuse for an adult. I'm still trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> and then we get the outro. Could I be enough for you? Because I'm not enough for them. And it the whole song just shifts after that, after that bridge. It's no longer just a song that I think any any pop rock group could have made. Because honestly, up to that point, it's just it's a fun little twist on a love song, right? <laughs> It's about understanding that uh, people have dependencies on substances to help them get through things, and sometimes you don't line up with somebody else. And so we have the double play on chemistry, the chemistry between two people, but also the chemical makeup of the brain and how substances can affect that and make it so that people can line up and have more chemistry when they adjust their chemical makeup, right? There, there's this clever little word play on multiple levels there. But that's also not something that I feel is too far out of the realm of some of the clever wordplay we have heard in some of the best pop rock tracks. It really is this bridge that takes it to the next level and I think makes it a much more interesting song. And when we bring it all back to where it was, this concept of can I make a relationship with this, this other person feels so insignificant when you realize the torrent that is going on inside the narrator. I, I just, I think that's awesome. I really do. Um, I ended up enjoying that a lot more. And I think that a lot of the more chaotic elements of the song are lining up a little bit better for me because of my understanding of what the song is trying to achieve lyrically. Um, I, I do think I need a couple more listens to get a good feel for some of these shifts in it. But overall, yeah. I need to, I need to listen to more of this artist. I remember uh, the requester had mentioned something about they were not liked by people or something like that, and they they didn't understand why. I don't, I don't know. Is there any controversy going on? Did did did? I mean, he mentioned in the song that he feels like he's one tweet away from losing his whole job. So, um, it, did he say something? Did he tweet something that was not great? <laughs> <laughs> is this one of those situations where I find out about an artist who makes some really cool music and then they're not a great person? So, I mean, there is that one throwaway line in the bridge where he says, uh, she asked me, who did you vote for? And I lied and said, Biden, of course. And she smiled in relief and I can't let her find out I'm not even registered. So, I don't know, man. 
Maybe he's got some wild hot takes on Twitter. Those are just my thoughts, though. Andres, uh, chemistry set. What did you think of this track? Is anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it. Put all that stuff down in the comments section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.